Chi for uh, the food movement. Oh, sorry about that, folks. We're, We're not going to wait for corporations to voluntarily stop planting the genetically modified crops. We are going to make that happen ourselves. Just like we're going to make this concert happen ourselves. Let's give it up for our peddlers. Yeah! And now, I'd like to do a song about gardening.
Joe. Thank you. Did I take that one? Did I take this one? Uh, no, this one right here. Very interesting. Thank instrument. you, Cello Joe. Who enjoyed that? Anybody with me? Yeah, all right. Am I the only one enjoying that? I'd like to introduce Laura Donahue from Slow Food San Francisco. She's going to say a few words about their work and a program in particular that she's involved with. Um, Laura. Can everyone welcome Laura, please? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Laura and I work with Slow Food San Francisco. Uh, we're tabling just down there. And Slow Food is an international organization and Slow Food San Francisco is a chapter. And there's been a huge shift in the organization over the last few years to focus on school lunch and child nutrition. And a few ways that Slow Food San Francisco has gotten involved in that uh, has been through our school garden work. We do both financial support, but also bringing really innovative programs to the schools like vertical gardens. And then um, in 2011, we had our first annual Childhood Obesity Bay Area Conference. And we're going into our third conference right now. Um, it'll be February 22nd at UCSF Medical Center. And our keynote speakers are Dr. Robert Lustig, who's gonna talk about the effects of sugar and Todd Putnam, who's the former VP of Marketing at Coca-Cola. And he's gonna talk a little bit about the marketing tactics of the food and beverage industry. Um, so we really hope everyone can join. Um, really the goal of this conference is to have a discussion with the community. We have an amazing community working on healthy food and sustainability. So it's really about developing best practices with everyone's voice involved. Um, so whether that's research or technology or business, um, we have flyers about the conference over at our table, so if you want to go check it out, that would be great. And yeah, have a great day. Yeah, for those of you just uh, logging on, uh, we're here at the Greater Good Food Fair. Thanks, Laura. All right, we're going to have our first panel discussion on food integrity and food systems. If I could invite on stage some of our guests. Would you like to leave a comment? Let me know how the sound of the video is. I depend on you. One man operation. Thank you for coming. Anybody interested, come around. We're going to have our first panel discussion. I'd like to welcome. Actually, shall I introduce yourselves? Tia Lieberts from Center for Food and Safety, no, Food and Water Watch, I'm sorry about that, Tia. <laughs> Betty Hall from Roots of Change, Zach Kelsvier from Organic Consumer Association, Sylvia Wu from Center for Food and Safety. Let me get this out of the way here. And Mark Squire from Non-GMO Project. Okay, so the topic discussion is food integrity in our food systems. And what I'd like to do first is pass the mic around and ask each of our guests to introduce themselves in terms of their work and what their organizations do. And we'll have a little bit more discussion about what they foresee as next steps to give some kind of direction to those of us working on local, local measures, local organization, local solutions that we can help fuel the work that they're doing in the bigger picture, but also do what we can to make sure that we're all working together. So let me start with, with Mark, and um, there'll be some questions at the end, so be thinking about them as you go. Thanks so much. Hi, y'all. It's so nice to have a nice sunny day. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a grocer in Marin County every day, Good Earth Natural Foods, and uh, I'm also on the, the board of the Non-GMO Project. Uh, which has just seen phenomenal growth for the last couple of years. Um, the the non-GMO project really came out of, um, there was a, a group of natural food retailers who were very frustrated because we saw this technology coming on our grocery shelves. Uh, we didn't uh, agree with it. We didn't see anybody talking about it. We uh, had no way of knowing what was happening. Um, we did an effort to try and get uh, manufacturers to, you know, give us letters, you know, saying that they weren't using GMOs and 
the whole process was very frustrating because we got back a lot of, uh, you know, it, it just became very evident that nobody in the food industry really understood what was happening. So that was kind of the launch of the non-GMO project where, and you guys have seen the, bub the little uh, butterfly seal on products at this point probably. But, you know, I'm really uh, enthusiastic about the, the difference the project has made partly because it's, you know, in, in light of the fact that we don't have labeling from the uh, government, which I'm hoping will change here pretty soon um, with Washington State that I think we all need to be really supporting. Um, but yeah, they're, they're fighting the battle right now. It's uh, fast and furious up there. But uh, so in, in light of the fact that we don't have that, the project has offered people a real choice in the marketplace. And you know, we've seen, we're now on like 10,000 products, uh, our logo is. So, you know, I, I feel like that can, uh, you know, even if labeling passes, there will still be a need for labeling of real strict avoidance, which is what the Nanjima project uh, does. So I think I'll pass the mic at this point. And, uh... I'm at Sylvia. I, I, uh, In the past, a lot of federal issues, a lot of issues, a lot of issues um, to the topic of food safety, a little misleading. Food safety as part of the safety of our environment, the safety of our health, and so food safety encompasses everything um, and you know the issues we work on ranges predominantly in the past a lot on genetically modified crops and you know labeling or GE foods but also industrial farming um, you know you know a lot of fish farming and a variety of issues um, at the Center for Food Safety I am not part of sort of the the our you know um, policy or grassroots movement arm um, I'm a staff attorney there and um, there, I do a lot of work related to genetically modified crops and pesticide use. Um, so it's, again, it's sort of thinking about food integrity from the standpoint of, I think, taking it back from the big ag and taking it back from the big corporations. And I think that's sort of, you know, part of the next step that we all need to be thinking about. So with that, I'll pass the mic. Uh, so I'm Zach Caldvier. I'm assistant media director for the Organic Consumers Association. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, so as you can probably tell, we're uh, a nonprofit advocacy for issues related to organics, uh, sustainability, including uh, civil liberties. A lot of this stuff really actually come together uh, in one larger movement, uh, in a larger food movement, a larger social justice movement, a larger environmental justice movement. Uh, right now, we're, you know, to no surprise, we're really focused on Washington's uh, labeling measure. We're also very focused on what fracking means to our future, not just the future of the climate, the future of our health and the future of our food. Again, these are all very connected. Um, we also really monitor what the USDA tries to do to the organic uh, regulations and, and, and kind of the, uh, they, they're always trying to weaken them because there are bigger and bigger corporations that are seeking to get into the organic game because they see, hey, there's a market here. There's a way we can make money off this too, but we'd like to lower the standards of what organic means uh, and change the definition without people knowing what that definition is. So we're very active in trying to keep the USDA accountable. Same thing with the FDA. The FDA, of course, is an arm of Monsanto. It's run by a former Monsanto attorney. Uh, so they are constantly, rather than trying to protect uh, us from corporate abuse like they're supposed to, they're doing the opposite. They're secret. They're always trying to find little ways to weaken protections uh, to increase corporate profit. So we're very active in all the little things the FDA is doing and trying to organize our 1.2 million members uh, or followers uh, to really keep these people on the ball, let them know we're watching uh, and they're not getting away with this without notice. And we're also very active in the legislature, in the Congress, I, I would call it an inside-outside strategy. We want to support local initiatives. We want to support March Against Monsanto. We want to support gatherings like these and local activists. But we're also going to be inside, inside the halls of Congress, uh, raising hell. 
So that's what uh, that's what we do. I'll pass it on. Hellraiser. Okay. Uh, my name is Betty Hall. I'm with an organization called Roots of Change, and what our organ thank you. What our focus is California and how to change policy in California so that um, it's really supporting sustainable uh, food system change. So uh, we have, uh, and we've been working with a group of food policy council up and down the state of California. Right now there's about 28 groups. There's uh, Berkeley, there's San Francisco, there's Oakland. And really what we're doing is focusing on how we can work within communities to change uh, policies locally. Um, and expanding that out into the state. So um, we uh, convene up and down the state, uh, really sharing these different policy councils, best practices, letting the left hand know what the right hand is doing so that we can know what's working in various communities and how they might be effective in your towns, your cities, and, and your regions. Um, you can find us on Facebook, um, and you can find us online at rootsofchange.org and happy to answer any questions next. And we will be raising hell as well. Yay. <laughs> Hello, fellow hell raisers. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Tia. I am from Food and Water Watch. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> we have our fans club. <laughs> um, so, Food and Water Watch, we're a national consumer advocacy organization. Um, and we work to ensure that everyone has access to safe, sustainably produced food and safe, publicly owned water. So um, we have multiple kind of sections that we work on, food, water, and common resources. The big water campaign right now we're working on is fracking. So it's fun to hear fracking on the panel. But today we're here talking about food, and our food program is really all about addressing the corporate consolidation of our food system. So looking from seed to grocery store, from Monsanto's control of seeds to you know the fact that one in three dollars that we spend at grocery stores goes to Walmart um, is, is really, um, how we address our food system. So in the past, we've worked on issues like country of origin labeling um, and, and, of course, labeling genetically engineered foods because we believe deeply in um, our right to know and we really um, believe that consumers should have the choice of what they're eating. And so um, I just moved back from the Midwest. I've been living in Detroit for the last two and a half years working to uh, put pressure on Debbie Stabenow, chair of the Senate Agricultural Committee. Um, we've done a ton of work on the Farm Bill. I think that the, there's a ton of pieces of legislation on the federal level, on the state level, and on the local level that we can all be engaging with. But it's really about um, getting people to participate in democracy, getting people to participate and hold their elected officials accountable. And so um, that's a big part of what we do um, is working with our members and um, yeah, trying to also raise hell to protect our food. <laughs> Thank you, Tia. So a quick question. This was this is what, what the planning committee's been pondering because we talk about these things all the time. We're trying to get some sense as you all who do incredible work, and not just meaningful, but essential to this whole movement continuing forward, whether we're talking about food, whether we're talking about farm, fracking, social justice, environmental justice, we understand fully that they're entirely connected and that, that we need to do what we can to bring that message forward to the rest of the bigger picture, people who are perhaps making the decisions on behalf of all of us. Give us some sense of what you think would be the next the next moves. I mean, we've got a lot of exciting things happening across the state, across the nation, in terms of labeling and food transparency. Where we are at this moment, what would you say would be your wish list for the next step in terms of change? Mark, can you start that? Sure. Well, you know, I'm, I'm more and more convinced that it all comes down to education, you know? So, um, you know, I watching our success at 37, and I, I, I actually say it uh, as success, because, you know, being in the food industry, I think that people perhaps don't, in the public, don't really understand how the impact of 37 had on the food industry. It's like, you know, they're all the executives, even at Kellogg's and, you know, the big food companies, 
they're all looking for a plan B right now and uh, how to get out of this mess that they've gotten in. And, you know, largely that's just because 37 got us all as a, a nation talking about the GMO issue, whereas before that people had sort of been, uh, you know, a lot of us didn't understand it or it was like this word that, you know, we didn't fully grok. Um, you know, and I've been really trying uh, to talk a bit about the science because I think it really comes down to the science. Uh, there's right now there's some very good science showing that it, as soon as we start looking at the GMO issue from a health point of view um, in a scientific way uh, with a little bit longer term studies than the industry has done, what you find out is that there's, you know, these products are really hurting us. They're killing, you know, they're hurting our kids. There's, uh, you know, a pig study just came out from uh, Australia that showed that pigs at slaughter that had been fed GMOs, they had uteruses that were 25% uh, bigger than the, uh, the pigs that weren't eating GMOs. So, you know, there's a, a mouse study that shows that uh, litter size is after eating GMOs is reduced generation to generation. So these are like tip offs that there is actually huge what I call endocrine disruption activities. You know, they're, they're, these crops are screwing around with our hormones. And that means that, you know, they're affecting us dramatically. And, uh, you know, we really need to be talking about that, uh, you know, to our friends, our neighbors, you know, people have no idea. And I think that. Um, it's actually not, it's not a, um, by coincidence that we don't know about all that stuff because I think there's been a, a very concerted effort by the corporations to uh, suppress any good science, to uh, influence any science that's being done. Um, we literally have a scientific community now that is being, you know, effectively paid off uh, to tell us, tell us what the corporations want us to hear. and. The reason for that is that you, you know, if you're doing, uh, if you're a scientist now and you're doing studies into GMO, um, you can't get funded for studies unless you are predictably going to come out with the results that the corporations that are funding the studies are are looking for. So we have a scientific uh, community now that's just being held hostage, and uh, we need to talk about that. You know, there's only one cure is to. You know, really, all it you know, get our all our communities talking about the bogus science that we're seeing, the the science that is showing problems, you know, and uh, you know the people that are actually influencing the science have this reputation too. Of, I mean, Monsanto. You you go look at what they did with PCBs years ago, and there are actually court documents that show not only did they did they know that they were poisoning communities with PCBs, but they were lying to the communities about that fact while they were doing it. And it didn't come out in court documents until many, many years later that that's what was going on. But you, you know the same thing is happening with the GMO issue. So education. Thank you, Mark. I pass it down. If each of you could give your comments on your perspective, it would be helpful to all of us to put the pieces together. Um, I think, first of all, I definitely second everything that Mark just said. Um, <laughs> I think that, too, for me, my, I think part of education, too, for me, in terms of my wish list of everyone talking and be people be becoming aw more aware of the issues is also sort of, when you get down to it, as we start talking more about it, the issues are not as complicated as the corporations make them seem. It's beyond human health, beyond the studies, you know, genetically modified crops, the way they are engineered right now, they're engineered to resist precisely the herbicides and pesticides that Monsanto and everybody sells. So it comes down to a very basic issue of not just protecting human health, but just protecting our environment, just pesticides and their harms on the environment. And I think that sort of simplifying the concept and moving beyond like what is GMO but just sort of things that we as individuals that care about the environment have been grappling with water contamination uh, pesticide resistance and you know uh, the growing of the same crops across you know millions and millions of fields um, that to me it's sort of like the wish list I wish the conversation shifted 
shift to sort of the underlying, the simplified pictures. And I think in that way, bring, we'll bring more people together. So I'll just second again what both of them, what both of them said. And I'll, I'll just go to, let me start with a broad perspective because I think one thing we have to be aware of and that we're certainly always concerned with is people become uh, overwhelmed and they feel uh, powerless. And I think it's important to understand and remember a simple truth that our history has shown in this country and that's only organized people can defeat organized money. And this has been borne out in the women's suffrage movement. You know, you couldn't imagine women, su women winning the right to vote with an all-male Congress that were against it, but they did. And that's because they organized inside and outside. They took it to the streets, they took it to Congress, and they took it to the people. And you see that in the civil rights, you see it in labor rights, you see it in gay rights now. And I think we're on the cusp of a new food movement, which we need to borrow a lot of the techniques uh, and strategies that have worked in the past in these really large movements that affect every aspect of our life, which food does. So with that in mind, in terms of what I would like us to see, I think there are all kinds of things we can do on many different levels, again, back to this inside-outside strategy. I think we need to sh obviously use our dollars wisely, make our dollars work for us politically. That means you don't spend money on, obviously, processed, genetically modified foods, so none of your dollars goes to Monsanto so they can fund ads that are lying to people about why they shouldn't even know what's in their food. Same thing goes for boycotting organic foods that are owned by the corporations, once again, that are trying to profit off organics while bankrolling efforts to undermine them and undermine, again, our right to know, our right to a label. And at, or, at OCA, we do this. We're constantly monitoring and, and giving this information to people, again, the education component, uh, so people know what products to stay away from, they know what, who to boycott. Uh, and then I think, you know, it's also staying, in, if there's a march or a protest or a food fair, go out there and, and, sh and show, again, the, the leaders of this country, uh, the politicians, uh, and, the, and the people, the voters, the public, that this is an issue that matters and that we care about and that they should care about. And you know, that also means sending letters to the FDA. We, you know, again, this is stuff we work on. Right now, the FDA is trying to re rewrite food safety rules uh, that would absolutely undermine local farmers markets, organic farmers. I won't go into all the details right now, but we have a letter that you can send directly to the FDA saying this is what's wrong with this bill. Essentially what they're trying to do is use rules that are needed for factory farms to destroy organic and small farms and therefore the kind of farmers markets that we all enjoy and we also all need to support. And you know, and then also of course Washington, we need to pass that. Uh, the more help that can be done there. If Washington passes labeling, it's very hard to see a scenario that labeling won't go national in the very short future because two states through their legislatures have passed labeling, Connecticut and Maine. Then if Washington does, you know, the, the food producers and the manufacturers, they can't label differently for different states. They'll have to go national. So that's another critical area. I think if you put all these components together, remember that we can do this, that the people can change anything if we all put our minds to it and then find those specific areas to do it. And that goes every from where you shop to who you send letters to and to what marches you attend. So let's do it. So uh, I'll bring it um, really close to home and say, um, we do need to educate ourselves, but then we also need to be active. And active can be not doing a, a big giant campaign, but really going home and talking to your friends and your family about what you're concerned about and then just working with people like-minded people in your communities uh, there are like i said there are policy councils probably um, in in within 10 to 20 miles of all of you that you could get involved in if you want and and if you go online you can find them that we have them all listed but also you can start to put pressure on your city government and say hey where are you buying your stuff? Let's procure this stuff from local people. Let's secure it from organic uh, farmers who are in our community. So you can put pressure right here at home, which will then reverberate out. And you can set best practices right at home. 
from your dollars that you spend to the dollars that your city spends to the dollars that your region spends, um, you can put pressure on your school system. You can go in and you can talk to all these people. Um, and they have to, you know, they're more likely to listen to you than Washington, D.C. So if we start to start to do this change here locally and then spread it out to California, California can set, a, you know, the best practices for the nation. So um, I would say let's let's really get active locally and get really noisy here and let that reverberate out to the rest of the, of, of the community. All right. Going last on this is hard because I'm like, yeah, exactly what they said. <laughs> Done. No, um, so I'll try to highlight a couple things that I think. Um, so if we're talking wish list, uh, my number one wish list across all the issues that I work on is that we need to get money out of politics and we need to overturn Citizens United. Yeah. That's wish list. Um, so I think a, a couple, I mean, I agree, it's, it's educate, agitate, or organize. Right? We need to educate, we need to get mad, we need to, we need to build community around this, we need to get people engaging, and we need to organize. Um, and I think that's how we're going to win, and I think that's how we're winning. So um, I, I will say that. Um, I think also we need to be looking on the local level, I agree, on the state level, and then on the federal level and international level. Uh, we need to be paying attention to things like the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the TPP. Um, it's in like negotiations, closed door negotiations right now, and that could um, give corporations a ton of power. It can bring a lot of food that is not going to be labeled back into America. It's unsafe. Um, I won't go into it completely, but it is. I would highly recommend folks look up and, and get to know the TPP um, before it passes so we can put pressure on our elected officials to not let that happen. And then I'm just going to echo again um, supporting Washington State right now. Uh, so everyone can go to www.yeson522.com and there's actually ways to volunteer from California to support the Washington campaign. You can phone bank from home and call Washington voters and let them know how important it is. Um, you know, Monsanto has money, yes, but we have people and, and I think power lies in the people and in those contacts. Um, so those conversations that we have are really important on all levels. Um, so those are my next steps. I think we're gonna, I think a couple things I'd just highlight, but I, I think we are kind of on, the, the food movement is on this kind of cusp of a lot of things happening at once. And I think there's a lot of power in this movement. Um, food affects everybody and there are issues along the entire spectrum that need to be addressed. And so um, I'm really excited, I'm really energized. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy to see you guys all out here today. I think you're taking a huge first step just just being here is being active, and, and we need everyone to be doing that. Thank you all. Thank you. That was very insightful. It's, it's nice to hear your point of view because we always ponder. What would they say if? Who has questions? We have about 15 minutes for questions. Can you make your... Go ahead. I can already feel getting a sunburn here, so... Sure. I'm, I'm a grocer in Marine County, Good Earth Natural Foods, and then I'm also on the board of the Non-GMO Project. Um, I'm Sylvia. I'm with the Center for Food Safety. Zach for Organic Consumers Association. I'm Betty Hall with Meets of Change. We're located right here in the Bay Area. And I'm Tia with Food and Water Watch. Thanks. Kate Green has a question. She's one of the organizers of the planning committee. I think that was sun there first. I feel that I'm, I'm pretty active. the picture, but I'm um, getting sunburned. As, as active as I can pretty much possibly be as a single parent. Pretty rare out there. I hope um, uh, to do this event. Can I be, can, am I doing this properly? I've never actually used one of these. And um, I'm a graphic designer. Um, myself and another individual in my office, we designed the non gmo project logo. A lot of design projects um, Sorry. that are related to this kind of messaging. Uh, what else? So um, this whole thing has come up with education, and I feel that people uh, who kind of already care are educating themselves. Um, what do you think, as so, so many of you have identified education, uh, is the best form of education? Is it really just 
talking to everybody you know about this, is that really the, the best uh, way to educate? Is, it, is there any way to get this into our schools? And, 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 and my uh, other question, our final is debating the, the, the elected officials. Yeah. Um, yeah. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised they're not educating themselves, but evidently they aren't. And I'm wondering if there are any that have been identified that are kind of on our side, and um, if we can really meet with them. Maybe we're doing them and put together and, and concentrate whatever kind of power they have to push this kind of stuff through. I, I just, I'm, I'm Okay, I'm a, now I'm babbling. I'll, I'll take the part on what's in the market. One of the issues we just recently did, one of the that's one strategies, is that there is a huge gap in knowledge in our political culture in Congress. I mean, it, it's it's shocking, frankly. And that, that goes even to legislators like Elizabeth Warren, who right now, we are not, not targeting, that sounds too negative. We are trying to educate her and also make people aware that even her, and, and Mark Udall, for instance, uh, also a good congressman on a lot of issues, they have both sent letters to the FDA recently uh, asking them to finalize, and this all gets kind of wonky, but in its broadest terms, they're trying to get the FDA to finalize rules from about 10 years ago that essentially would put into place voluntary labeling nationally. And that essentially would be used by companies like Monsanto and DuPont uh, as an argument to override any state and local efforts to label. So in fact, this is something that Monsanto and those companies support. They support those rules. And Elizabeth Warren is pushing them as if that's a consumer advocacy position. Now, I love her on a ton of issues. So this is not an attack, but this is an attack on this position. And so we have been sending her messages. We have been, we, we did a protest uh, outside Congress's, each of the Congress's office. We just awarded the 10 congressmen who we call Monsanto's minions. We had our, we had our uh, people vote on it. And then we, the top 10, we brought to their office phony awards from Monsanto. And then we dropped cash from the halls of Congress down onto the floor. You might have seen it on TV. Yeah. So that's an example problem, of eh? really taking it to Congress's steps and forcing, a lot of it is not that they are necessarily against us, but it's a complicated issue. They're working on other stuff. They're very concerned with raising money. Uh, and so I think it's important that people send them emails. It's important that, that they go to groups like ours so their voice can be you know, put to a megaphone. I think that's what we try to do. Um, and you know, these, there are legislators that can turn. And in, per, and in terms of who's on our side, I mean, Bernie Sanders, uh, he is a leader on this issue, always has been. Uh, there's Alan Grayson. There are people out there that are fighting the good fight, and there are more that we can bring on, just like uh. our history has shown. And all these movements in the past, you can take bring legislators to our side. And I'll ask, so I, that's one component of your question. The audio. Maybe I should stop the stream and restart it. We noticed so, I've had a few issues yeah, with I the think mic that, I think that a, a big thing that needs to happen right now, and I, I kind of talked about this, was um, recognizing the power that we have and like recognizing all of our own power. And so with education, I think education is incredibly important, but I think it's critical that we include action every time we're educating someone. I had to move away so we educate them on the issues and then we have them write a letter to their congressperson or write a letter to the editor, to the newspaper, to help amplify our message and to help get those people who maybe okay, are hated and don't again. want to engage anymore one step closer 